one of the things we've done um it's a secret but i can tell you <laughs> i think <it's> a... <laughs> no nobody's listening <laughs> well is that we've just mapped the tree of life using assembly theory because mm -hmm. everyone said oh that you can't do anything in biology and what we're able to do is so you i think there's three way well two ways of doing tree of life traffic uh um, well three ways actually yeah what's the tree of life so the tree of life is basically um tracing back the history of life on earth for all the different species going back what who evolved from what and it all goes all the way back to the first kind of life forms and they branch off and like you have plant kingdom the animal kingdom the fungi system, the kingdom you know and different and different branches all the way up um and the way this was classically done and i'm no evolutionary biologist the evolution biologists are very tell me every day <laughs> at least 10 times um, uh, I want to be one though. I kind of like biology. It's kind of cool. But, yeah, it's very cool. Um, but basically, what uh, <laughs> what Darwin and Mendeleev and all these people do is just they draw pictures, right? And they they taxa. They just con they were able to draw pictures and and say and say, oh, these look like common classes. Yeah. Then <laughs> <laughs> they're artists, really. They're just you know. But they're, they're but they're they were able to find out a lot, right? And looking at vertebrates and vertebrates, yeah. Cambrian explosion, and all this stuff, and then. Um, then came the genomic revolution and suddenly everyone used gene sequencing and Craig Venter is a good example. I think he's gone around the world in his yacht just taking up samples, looking for new species where he's just found new species of life just from sequencing. It's amazing. So you have taxonomy, you have sequencing and then you can also do a little bit of kind of molecular um, uh, kind of archaeology like, you know, measure the samples and, and kind of form some inference. What we did um, is we were able to fingerprint. So we took a load of random samples from all of biology, and we used mass spectrometry. And what we did now is not just look for individual molecules, but we looked for coexisting molecules where they had to look at their joint assembly space and where we, we were able to cut them apart and, and undergo recursion in the mass spec and infer some relationships. And we were able to recapitulate the tree of life using mass spectroscopy no sequencing and no drawing all right can you uh try to say that again with a little more detail so recreating what does it take to recreate the tree of life what does the reverse engineering process look like here so what you do is you take an unknown sample you pung it into the mass spec you get a because this comes from what you asked like what do you see in e coli mm -hmm. and so in e coli you don't just see it's not a, it's not a, it's not the the most sophisticated um cells on on Earth make the most sophisticated molecules. It is the coexistence of lots of complex molecules above a threshold. Mm -hmm. And so what we realize is you could fingerprint different life forms. So fungi make really complicated molecules. Why? Because mm -hmm. they can't move. They have to make everything on site. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, some animals are like lazy. They can just go eat the fungi. You know, they don't need to make very much. And I um and so what you do is you look at the so you take, I don't know, the fingerprint, maybe the top number of high molecular weight molecules you find in the sample, you fragment them to get their assembly indices. And then what you can do is you can infer common origins of molecules. You can do a kind of molecular, um, um, when the reverse engineering of the assembly space, you can infer common roots and look at what's called the joint assembly space. Um, but what, let's translate that into the experiment. Take a sample, bung it in the mass spec, take the top, say, 10 molecules, fragment them, and then and that gives you one fingerprint. Then you do it for another sample, you get another fingerprint. Now the question is you say, hey, are these samples the same or different? Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been able to do. And um, by basically looking at the assembly space that these molecules create. Mm -hmm. Without any knowledge of assembly theory, you are unable to do it. With a knowledge of assembly theory, you can reconstruct the tree. How does how does knowing if they're the same or different give you the tree? Let's go to two leaves on different branches on the tree, right? What you can do by counting the number of differences, you can estimate how far away their origin was. Got it. And that's all we do. And it just works. But when we realized you could even use assembly theory to recapitulate the tree of life with no gene sequencing, we were like, huh. So this this is looking at samples that exist today in the world. What yeah. about like things that are no longer exist? I mean... The tree contains information about the past. I would. Some love, of it is gone. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I would love to get old fossil samples and apply assembly theory mass spec and see if we can find new forms of life mm. that have that are no longer amenable to gene sequencing because the DNA is all gone. Because mm. DNA, DNA and RNA is quite unstable, but some of them are complex molecules might be there and might give you a hint of something new. Or wouldn't it be great if you if you find a sample that's worth really persevering and doing, um, you know, doing. Uh, the proper extraction to re to you know PCR and so on, and then sequence it and then put it together. So when um, a thing dies, you can still get some information about its complexity. Yeah, and we can, and it appears that you can um, do some dating. Now, there are really good techniques. There's radiocarbon dating. There is um, longer dating, going looking at radioactive minerals and so on. And you can also in bone, you can look at the what happens in after something dies is the the you get what's called racemization where the 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 chirality in the polymers mm -hmm. basically changes and you just get you get decomposition and the rate of uh, the deviation from the pure po uh, um uh, uh, enantiomer to the mixture you can have a it gives you a time time scale on it a half life so you can date when it died I want to use assembly theory to see if I can date, use it, date death and things, and and trace the tree of life and also decomposition of molecules. Do you okay. think it's possible? Oh yeah, without a doubt. It may not be better than what because like the I was just at a conference where some brilliant people were looking at isotope enrichment and and looking at how life en enriches isotopes and they're really sophisticated stuff that they're doing. But I think there's some fun to be had there because it gives you another dimension of dating. How old is this molecule? Mm -hmm. um in terms of in or more importantly how long ago was this molecule produced by life mm -hmm. the more complex the molecule the more prospect for decomposition oxidation reorganization loss of chirality and all that jazz but what life also does is it enriches as you get older the, the amount of carbon 13 in you goes up Mm -hmm. Because of the because of the way the metabolic because of the way the the bonding is in in carbon thirteen, so it has a slightly different strength bond strength than you. It's called the kinetic isotope effect. So you can literally date how old you are, you know, uh, or when you stop metabolizing. So you could date someone's debt how old they are. I think I'm making this up. This might be right, <laughs> but I think it's roughly right. The amount of carbon thirteen you have in you, you can kind of estimate how how old you are. How old? living or humans are or living yeah yeah organisms. like you could say oh this person is 10 years old and this person yeah. 30 years old because they'll be metabolizing more carbon and they've accumulated it yeah. that's the basic idea it's probably completely wrong time scale signatures but... of, of chemistry are fascinating yeah.